Today, we look at Taiwan's bilingual nation 2030 plans, starting with the first public high school to offer guaranteed spots at a UK university. And the official charting the bilingual plan tells us the nation's goal for 2030. Taiwan's doctors also tell us what brand of COVID booster shot we should get. And in Hashtag Taiwan, I'll tell you why a military exercise in Taiwan is putting a bar in Ireland on high alert. This is Taiwan Insider. Today we're going to take a look at a goal Taiwan's government has set for the country, Bilingual Nation 2030. Before we find out what that means, let's take a look at a school that got a head start in 2017. It's the first public high school to pioneer a global track to the UK and US. Jesse is an art student at the first public high school to go global in Taiwan, Taipei's Zhongzhen Senior High School. The International Foundation Year IFY program allows students to study college-level international classes that will guarantee them a spot in a UK university. The school also has joint diploma programs with American high schools. Jessie tells me what she likes most about IFY. I like the way teachers teach us. Uh, he teach us how to write useful essays and we read articles, and we have a lot of presentations. This was one of Jesse's projects. Nowadays, people often tend to eat quickly in the car while working or when watching TV, so they won't be aware of the food they ate. But while eating mindfully, people can enjoy the food that they eat and maintain a healthy weight. She shares how she feels about going to university in England. It's a good chance to explore the art museums and artworks abroad and I'm looking forward to it. If you could do any job in the world, what would you like to do? I think designer. In addition to art and design, students can also pick business, science, or engineering as their focus of study. So we're here with Amber and Gabriel. They are juniors, 11th graders here at Zhongzhen High School in the IFY program. I know both of you are studying science. Tell me why you decided to study science and to join the IFY program. I want to study science because I like biology so much and I want to be a doctor in the future. So I choose IFY and join the science program. Well, that's great. And how about you, Gabriel? Um, well, because uh, I really like astronomy and I want to study abroad, like study about astrophysics. I want to be like a scientist that studied uh, space, universe. I'm so interested in it. We have a, a budding new scientist and a future doctor here with us. The school's IFY director, Li Ming, tells me what students like most about the classes. What they like about the class is the vibe. That kind of, you know, college-related atmosphere. They are trained to be a college student or university student because they are not just basic courses. International Foundation Year, why is it called foundation? Because this kind of course or this kind of curriculum lays a foundation for their university learning. You are supposed to do critical thinking and mm. imagination and challenge each other's idea and arguments. Our principal even allows us to have a lot of interaction with the whole world, not just the UK, but also Australia. We have a lot of you know, youth summits for those IFY or JDP Joint Diploma Program students. So we don't just study hard, we also party hard <laughs> in our own way academically. You know what I'm talking about. Right. They also go abroad for a certain amount of time. That's right. That's during right. The program, right. Without this vaccine, they should have been abroad. They should have been to Switzerland to uh, attend some university courses related to science engineering or uh, attended some summer programs related to uh, being an entrepreneur or some art and design you know extended project in which they can be you know interconnected to those Italian painters or those European painters but you know, because of vaccines, everything has to go online. These global programs are much more affordable than international schools. 
and has spread to six public Taipei high schools. The woman who pioneered this global track in 2017 is Zhongzhen High School principal Zhang Huizhen. She shares what universities students have been attending. Most of them go to UK schools like London University, Chicago University. Their interests are very diverse. Some of them choose the major in film production, and some in business management, and some in agriculture. Thanks to Ms. Zhang, students can get a global education right here in Taipei, giving them more possibilities than ever before. So, who's in charge of charting bilingual nation 2030? The National Development Council. And today, I speak with the woman charting the plans, Director General of the NDC's overall planning department, Connie Zhang. I asked her what Taiwan's goals were for 2030. Basically, simply put, the goal for this、uh, policy is to provide the opportunities for our youth to have better job opportunities and higher salaries. Simply put, but to、That's、do that,、right. yeah, to do that, to achieve that, there's a lot more things that need need、uh, needs to be done. Well, tell us in terms of education, is there going to be more bilingual schools, more bilingual education to enable young people to have better English and be, become more competitive? In the global market, what we want to do right now, we start with our、um, college、uh, educations. We will establish some benchmark colleges or universities in which a lot of the courses always will be taught in English. So when they graduate, they have the professional、um, expertise. They are also able to communicate with their peers in English. For the elementary school. Junior high school or senior high schools. What you want to do is to encourage most、uh, schools to、um, set up courses in which all the classes will be taught in English as well. There's going to be some sort of like an overhaul of our educational system for, in terms of English education, very different from what we have right now. But we have seen some schools are doing this kind of experiments, and pretty much they are well accepted among parents and students are happy in that kind of.、Uh, Uh, yeah, learning environment. So we believe that can be a good way for us to、um, move forward in terms of our bilingual education. Well, that's very exciting. I think it's going to do so much for Taiwan to be able to be、uh, bilingual. And Taiwan has a lot of very dedicated, talented people. And if you add、yes, uh, do, English、yeah. speaking ability to that,、mm-hmm. they're going to be. It's going to be great for, for Taiwan. I believe. Now today, I want to share with you、um, some of the things that. It's sort of like a bad job of why we are doing all this because、um, you might have known Taiwan has been playing a very important, a pivotal role in the international supply chain. We have very、mm. good、um, industrial foundations, but there are so many times that multinational companies come to Taiwan looking for talents, and at the end they turn to Singapore for setting up their regional headquarters. Honestly、mm. speaking, we have been very dis-、um, disappointed and frustrated by this kind of situation. So you know, we have young people; they are professionally qualified for all the jobs those multinational companies offer. But the thing is, when it comes to English speaking、uh, proficiency, because you know, multinational companies needs to、uh, have people communicating with headquarters or with the regional hubs in in English, and our young people just fall short of that expectation. So they. At the end, turn to Singapore for、um, their headquarters, and we just believe that something should not be happening anymore. So that is why we want to push for this bilingual nation policy, and we focus our efforts for the first ten years into、um, cultivating better English proficiency of our、uh, young people. What do you think the goal is to achieve by 2030? What do you want to see、um, different by then in Taiwan? If by 2030. We can have our,、um, say, college students reach middle or higher level of English speaking. Then we are successful in our、um, in, uh, English uh, uh, education. We are successful in our bilingual policy. And by that time, I'm confident we'll also see a lot more international companies establish themselves in Taiwan. We will see more of our、um, companies, Taiwanese companies, deployed abroad with the. An army of our own professionals speaking good English. We also talked about attracting foreign talent and other topics. All that in the full interview on YouTube and Facebook. Next, Leslie Liao has the latest on Taiwan's domestic COVID cluster.
A string of domestic COVID-19 cases has people in Taiwan on edge. Since last week, health authorities have announced around 60 locally transmitted COVID-19 cases, and most of them are in northern Taiwan. However, Taiwan has something it didn't have back in May 2021 when it first saw its first major COVID-19 outbreak, and that's a steady vaccine supply. Around 70% of Taiwan's population has two doses of a COVID vaccine. With the latest domestic surge, though, health officials are urging people to get a third booster shot. Here's a guide on what brand to choose. When should you get a third COVID-19 vaccine? The government has shortened the time between the second and third dose from 20 to 12 weeks. But which combination of vaccines is recommended for a third dose? Doctors say those who received AstraZeneca as their first two doses must choose other brands for their third dose. If the first two doses have been BioNTech or Moderna, or a combination of AstraZeneca with an mRNA vaccine, then half a dose of Moderna or a full dose of BioNTech will be recommended for your third jab. Studies have shown that a third dose of BioNTech will increase protection by 25-fold, while a third dose of Moderna will strengthen immunity 37 times. However, a third dose of AstraZeneca is not recommended if the first two doses were AstraZeneca. Meanwhile, one more country, Thailand, has given approval to Taiwan's COVID-19 medicine vaccine. That brings the total number of countries that recognize medicine to five, including New Zealand, Palau, Indonesia, and Belize. On Tuesday, one of Taiwan's F-16Vs went missing off the southwestern coast of Taiwan. On Wednesday, rescue workers found debris from the aircraft itself. However, the search for the pilot, 28-year-old Captain Chen Yi, is still ongoing. A fisherman carries aircraft debris through a river. Authorities confirmed that this is a piece of an F-16V that went missing off Taiwan's west coast on Tuesday. The fighter jet disappeared from radar at around 3.23 p.m. Now, authorities are scrambling to find the missing pilot, 28-year-old Captain Chen Yi. Officials have dispatched ships, helicopters, and plenty of manpower to assist the search. President Tsai Ing-wen has ordered that no effort be spared when it comes to bringing Chen home. Back in Sun's home in Nanto County, friends and family speak of him fondly. They say he's a well-mannered, upstanding person and they hope he will come home soon. Even the disciplinarian at Sun's high school says that he remembers Sun as a resilient individual. Sun graduated from Taiwan's Air Force Academy in 2017. He said that he always wanted to fly, and that's why he joined the Air Force. Rescuers continue their search around the clock, hoping they can bring Tsun back to his family soon. Next on Hashtag Taiwan, Leslie tells us about some interesting reactions to Taiwan's recent military exercises. Lunar New Year holiday is right around the corner. It's the biggest and longest holiday in Taiwan. But while people are gearing up to take a long, well-deserved break, Taiwan's military wants to make it clear that it's not slacking during the festive period. Last week, we showed some footage of some pretty intense pre-Lunar New Year military exercises that took place in the forest and mountains in southern Taiwan. And people in Kaohsiung City got a little nervous when they started seeing soldiers patrolling the streets and taking cover in the urban landscape. That was just another routine exercise in military preparedness, but it turned a couple of heads and made people nervous about what they were seeing. In recent years, Taiwan has placed great emphasis on upgrading its defense capabilities. In fact, just this week, Taiwan's legislature approved another 8.5 billion US dollars for defense spending to be used over the next five years. Now, the key word here is defense, as in that money should go towards protecting Taiwan and not attacking other countries. And I'm saying this because Taiwan's recent military exercises have created some concerns abroad. The Telegraph recently did a video feature on the Taiwanese Army's exercises where Taiwan's soldiers can be seen conducting training drills. One of the locations is a makeshift course meant to simulate urban landscapes. And to lend the exercise some realism, the buildings are labeled with signs from actual stores. Now, since these are defense exercises, you might think that some of the signs for stores on the buildings you can find in this training group Ground are stores you can find in Taiwan. Not the case. In the opening seconds of the Telegraph video, a group of soldiers can be seen walking past an Irish bar called O'Donoghue's. O'Donoghue's is an actual bar in Ireland. O'Donoghue's caught wind of the Telegraph video and asked on Twitter, just wondering if this is something that we should be worried about. Hashtag Battle of Marion Row, hashtag send help and they tagged the Irish Defense Forces Twitter for good measure. Some of the responses to O'Donoghue's tweet 
are pretty great. Constantine Machiavelli tweets, You've got nothing to worry about. If anything, you should be glad that if you've got a problem, and if nobody else can help, you can call the Taiwanese Special Forces. David M. tweets, Just offer them a toasty ham and cheese with a creamy pint of Guinness, it'd be all good. I mean, what problem in the world can't be solved with a ham and cheese toasty and a pint of Guinness? And Shiny Finger says, this is Ireland's chief medical officer's new method to get us out of the pub at 8 p.m. And that's because Ireland has ordered pubs to close at 8 p.m. as a way to combat the COVID-19 Omicron variant. Now, I just want to reassure the people at O'Donoghue's that I really don't think Taiwan plans on attacking Ireland anytime soon, if ever. But I get it. I'd be concerned too if I saw my house show up in a foreign country's military exercises. Next up, the stories that have been on our radar. A university in central Taiwan is in hot water amid allegations that it has been complicit in human trafficking. News outlet The Reporter has published an expose on the plight of Ugandan students enrolled at Zhongzhou University of Science and Technology. One student described being lured to Taiwan with false promises of a scholarship. He says that once in Taiwan, he and fellow students were forced to work in factories for long hours and little pay. The Education Ministry has banned the university from enrolling more foreign students. Taiwan has announced that it will invest 200 million US dollars in Lithuania's high-tech sector. It will also set up a 1 billion US dollar credit loan program aimed at countries including Lithuania. These announcements come as China puts economic pressure on Lithuania amid a spat over Taiwan's new representative office in the Lithuanian capital. The KMT suffered a double defeat over the weekend. An effort to unseat independent lawmaker Freddie Lim with a recall vote failed due to inadequate voter turnout. The KMT also lost a race to fill a Taichung area legislative seat left empty by another recall vote last year. KMT chairman Eric Zhu has faced calls to resign over these defeats and the results of a referendum vote in December that saw the party's position rejected. And we're back in the studio with our final question of the week. Now this week's question comes to us from Stash, but Stash is still in quarantine after his trip back home, so I'll be asking it on his behalf. Stash's question is, if you could take a pill and immediately become fluent in a language of your choice, what language would that be? Now Stash pre-recorded his answer, and this is it. If I could learn any language, you know, just at the, the flick of a switch, I think I'd learn Taiwanese Hokkien. Um, so I guess for our listeners and viewers that don't know what Taiwanese Hokkien is, it's probably the second most widely spoken language in Taiwan after Mandarin, particularly spoken by a lot of older people. Um, and yeah, I just think it would bring me, you know, a whole new side of Taiwan that I haven't really experienced so much before. Now that's a very stash answer if very there ever is answer. one, right? Yeah. Natalie, what would your uh, language of choice so, be? I would love to learn... Italian! Ooh. You know what I love about Italians? They are very expressive with their hands, mm -hmm. like, you know, good job well done, and, you know, all these gestures. They're so like, cute. I feel like we can be expressive with our hands as well. Yeah, so I want to pick that up from them, and I love their food, so I would love to oh, learn Italian. Italian food is great, <laughs> isn't it? Um, for me, I was about to choose the same thing as Stash, but I went the other way, actually, and I chose uh, Hakka. Ooh. Now, Hakka is a uh, uh, an ethnicity in China around the southern Chinese area, and if you didn't know, um, my family is Hakka on my really? dad's side. I'm half Hakka. Oh, and then you um, should learn it. I should learn it. I, was, I thought about Taiwanese uh, Hokkien, but I know a little bit of that. I know nothing of Hakka, so when my dad talks to my grandma, to my uncles, I have absolutely no idea what he's saying. So I would love to know what, what they're talking about if they're talking about my, my Probably dad. Probably about you, Because that's what it feels like. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's about it for this week's edition of Taiwan Insider. Uh, I'm Leslie Liao. And I am Natalie So. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Leave us a comment. We're on all the major platforms. you got Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Yes, and uh, let us know what you think of the show. We'd love to hear from you. For Taiwan Insider, we'll see you next time. See you around.